okay the agenda of this program is that we have to get the data data from some s flight table into our dc38 uh, report okay and we want to see the data from there we want to get the data and see the data so report always is used to display the data right so this is what we have so let's go ahead and uh, do that for uh, uh, so we'll go ahead uh, this s flight table and we've got these fields so we want only three or four, four fields we just want three or four fields so if you want just three or four fields what we need to do is we need to take create, build a structure in our program so let's create a program in this let's create a uh, structure in this uh, program let me start So we would like to get this data from this S flight table into our uh, into our uh, report program, and we have got this somewhere around fourteen fields. So we'll go ahead and now create a uh, program here. Say Z B A underscore. Flight. Okay. Now, if you see, we have got fourteen fields in the flight table. So, table. Uh, only four fields to be displayed. So, what we'll do is we will create a structure with only that four fields. I'll go with types. Begin of st underscore flight. End of st underscore flight. So this will go ahead with uh, some four or three or four. Take those fields from the uh, S flight table. So I'll go for carried. Oh, okay. So let me be a bit loud. Okay. So here we have this carry, coned, F FL date, and um, I'll take only just three fields. I'm taking just three fields here. Let me just take three fields. Let me copy this. So this is this is carried. The first field is carried. And then after giving the carried type, the data element which, which is corresponding to it is what we have to give. The data element corresponding to carried happens to be s underscore carried car underscore id. This is the data element that we have. Let's copy this. Then we have con it. Carry it, con it. Then we have FL data. FL data is of type and state. So hope you might have understood why we are giving this uh, these things here. 
So the reason we are giving this here is because we have the data elements like that. So we are giving the data elements here and we are creating a structure. This is a local structure that we are creating. If you remember in the past one we have given the properties but here we are giving the data elements. IT underscore ITS flight type standard paper ST underscore S flight because that's the structure that we have. ST underscore flight happens to be the structure which we gave in the in the above step. That is what we are giving here. And then we are giving the work area WA underscore S flight type ST underscore S flight. That's it. Now we will go ahead select star from uh, not star, only three fields are there, right? So Z carry, carry, on it, FLD data, FLD. I'll give this as FLD. from S flight into table IT underscore S flight where uh, where condition is not this just this is the one we have okay so what we just did is we created a structure then we created an internal table then we created a work area and that work area and internal table are taking the reference of the actual structure. Fine. So the S select statement is actually bringing the data from S flight standard table into our internal table into our, our 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 program. Then we have to write the loop statement to give the output of this. So we'll go for loop at it underscore S flight. into wa underscore s flight and look right wa underscore s flight item carry wa underscore con it FLD. So these are the three fields that we have here, which we need to give here. So in fact, so. Uh, that we have given only flights. So here I have to change this to uh, just flight, here also flight. So we have this data here. Okay. And we have, we have got the data into the program, into, the, into our report program. Now what if we would like to filter the data, we would like to filter the data based on say something like a flight name, flight number, okay, flight number happens to be so let's say if we have AA, we need only AA data, 
what if we want only AA data then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and filter it out and how do we filter the data by using black. sorry where condition exactly where condition and where we and now there are two way, two types where, where we can write the where condition where where uh, say that's that what is that carried is equals to AA okay this is one condition here where we are hard coding the value we will get only AA value we will not get any other thing but what if we want to change the input dynamically we don't want to give this static one in the during the runtime we want to decide what what needs to be done in that case what we have to do is we have to go for parameters so when we go for parameters parameters gives us an option to actually go ahead and decide the input type uh, s underscore char underscore id and what is this s underscore char underscore id that's the uh, data element name so in the where condition in the where condition we'll write something like carried is equal to s p underscore carry now what will happen is the parameter enables us to give an input here let me show you this what does the parameter enable parameter enables us to give some input here now whatever input you give here dynamically according to that it will show you the output there okay so if I select something like uh, AA I have already selected uh, let me select something like LH let's see if something is there for LH and execute now for LH only for LH we will have the data okay so dynamically now I will change the input as AA now immediately it will bring the data for in AA so what's happening is the parameter enables us to give a particular value and according to that value only we can get the output this is what we have Uh, we should write the parameter above the select statement only. Exactly, yeah. After the declaration part, above the select statement only, we have to write the parameter. If you don't write so above the select statement, then what will happen is it says, I don't understand what is this. Sorry. I have network issues. Could you repeat again? Yeah, so what I did is, yeah, I'll just do one more program. Uh, on another uh, uh, another table similarly so that it will be it will cover up uh, a new 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 table and the same concept with the same concept i'll do that so what i'll do now is i'll i'll create a similar kind of a program and i'll do everything same but the only thing is i will give a i'll create a standard structure i'll create a standard structure and i'll create a standard internal table table type also so if we create a standard structure then we, what will happen is that properties will come here the only difference between the table the program that i dis discussed now and the program that i'm going to discuss next is that here i have created a local structure this is a local structure but we'll create it with a, uh, a global structure we'll create a global structure in sc11 So what is it? Yeah, global structure is something which we create in the SC11 transaction, wherein we'll create the data type, and in the data type we'll give it as something like Z. I'll give any name Z Z S T underscore S Z underscore Z S T underscore S flight. Okay, so this is a global structure that we're creating, which can be used in multiple number of programs. When you create it in the local locally in the program, which will, it will act, it will it can be used only in that program. So click on create, and go for structure. So, okay. S -like. Here we'll go for something like carry type. First 
this way. Carry it, pawn it, and uh, let's do another one. FL date, type S and S for date. Yes, and that's good. Now what we did is we just created a structure globally in SC11. Now what I'll do is I will do exact program that we have done now. But the only thing is I'll be using the st uh, standard structure. So let me go into the ABAP editor. So I'll create with two. Now here we don't have to create the structure data it underscore s flight type standard table of that standard structure zsp s flight Type this flight. Now select those fields. What are the three fields that we have in that structure? Those fields. Carry it, pawn it, double it. Carry it, pawn it, double it. From S flight into table it underscore sl. Okay, that's it. So I'm not writing the where condition as of now. Loop statement happens to be pretty much the same. Okay, so I can better copy it from here.
loop and then we have to save this. Oh, sorry, this happens to be SF, right? Okay, I need to cut cut it short to SF. That's the work area name that I gave you. So you've got we got this data. We've got that data. So now the only difference between the previous one and the present one is that we have created the structure locally. Now here we are creating the structure globally. That's the only difference. And when we create a structure globally, it can be used multiple number of times in multiple number of uh, locations. This is what we have. And we have discussed about the parameters. Even this one. Even other than this program, we can use this. Yes, exactly. Anywhere we can use it within the server. Just in case if you want to access it because you have done it the same server, you can you can also access it from your login now. Because we all are working on the same server. It's globally can be available. The structure. So now if let's say if you want the same structure being used in multiple number of programs multiple number of times it's better to use as a uh, what you call global structure but just in you use it in, in the only this particular program then you have to go for uh, only in this program then it, it needs to be uh, it can be a local one uh, here uh, parameter id uh, will be like I'm sorry, parameter ID would be? Uh, like in the previous one, uh, we created the parameter ID. But in this case, how is it? Yeah, I, we, we haven't yet created it. We can create it. Let me create it in that, in this scenario as well. Because th th there, will be, there will not be any difference for that. Let me use the parameter here. And also, let me use something called select options. So let me also explain the significance of select options. How it works and all. Let me first use the parameters as we have done in the past one. So the parameter will actually enable us to give only one input. So I'll give something like pad b underscore carry for no p underscore carry type that uh, what was the uh, s carry i. Not sure, I'll just check. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so now even oh, this parameters should be above the select statement, it should be above the select statement. And now we have got this p underscore carry type s underscore carry underscore underscore id and here into table where we have to write the where condition where carrot is equals to p underscore carry. This is for picking up the data. Now what we have done in the previous program is we have created our own local structure. Here we are creating the global structure. Okay, here we are using the same uh, internal table, same work area and then we are creating a parameter here. And based on the parameter only, we have tried the select state in the search and also we need to, dis we need to uh, give that parameter concept as well here. So once this is done, we can go ahead and execute it. Now, Once we execute, you can give the input, the carried input, and execute it. You get the output.
Okay, so the basic difference, fundamental difference between this one and that one is that we created a global structure here, there we have created a local structure. And now additionally to filter the data, we can go ahead and go, go for the select options. Now what the select options will do is select options will allow us to give a range. S underscore FL date type S underscore uh, no, for, for S underscore date. Now what happens here is that you can now I'll go for for time being I'll just comment this uh, what you call where condition here. I'll write a new where con uh, where condition where where. What is the date field that we have here? FL date. FL date in S underscore FL date. So this is how we write it. We write that. So if you observe here, for uh, parameters we have given type here. For select options we gave for. And we have written is equal to here for parameters. But for select options we have written in. This one should be, yes, this one should be like this. We cannot give that uh, data element directly. We have to give the birth area name hyphen that field name. Field name happens to be FL date. Activate. Let's give this. And we've got this. So P underscore correct, I just commented it. So no matter whatever you give here doesn't matter, but here uh, FL date needs to be given properly. So FL date I'll give it as something like 23, 29, um, and here the today's date. I'm giving some dates here and executing. So we, we get the data only in that that uh, time stream time frame. So we'll get it only in that time frame. You can go and check. So we'll give a range of values for select options, but for parameters it will be like uh, this is something like zero one dot two thousand twenty two. Uh, sorry, this is dot. So we'll execute this. And you get this values, the values in that range. So this is what we have. Okay, let me share this code in in your uh, your chat.